Welcome to the Nebraska Department of Education's Making It Stick Professional Development Webinar Series. I'm Dr. Michael Quinn and I'll be your host for Module 8, Peer Editing. As a content master, I know that you can help improve students' writing. However, you can't help every student at the same time. How can students help improve each other's writing? And how can you monitor this activity? The Peer Editing Webinar will take 35 minutes. Throughout this module, we built in some learner engagement activities to ensure your comprehension. When you see the pencil icon, you'll be asked to pause, reflect, engage, and write in your viewing guide. Feel free to stop, start, and rewind as needed. After you complete the module, we'll ask you a few quick questions to see if we've helped you meet the lesson's objectives. Let's get started. Here's our webinar's umbrella question. How can the peer editing process improve the quality of students' writing in all content areas? Because we want students to be able to exceed the writing demands and expectations in our content area. First, we'll reflect on writing in your content area. Second, we'll review each step of the writing process. Third, we will explore inquiry-driven writing strategies. Then, we will examine peer editing strategies. Then, we will develop a peer editing guide. Finally, we will determine how to assess the peer editing process. After this webinar, you'll be able to lead a successful peer editing activity in your classroom. Either by yourself or in a group, let's take some time to reflect on your understanding of what writing is in your field. What types of writing do historians, automotive technicians, and accountants used to communicate in their field. When your students write in your content area, what are your specific writing demands? What does good writing look like? And what are the specific writing skills students should learn? Please pause the video for a moment and describe your content area writing demands, expectations, and skills in your viewing guide. If you're able, share with your colleagues. Do you share a common vision of what good writing looks like? Is there an overlap in skills that are being taught or reinforced across content areas? Press play when you're ready to resume. You may have uncovered commonalities or differences in terms of your views of good writing, the types of writing you assign, and the writing skills taught or reinforced across content areas. Whether you were an ELA or content area teacher, these views about writing, offered by author and teacher Jeff Anderson, may help shape your approach to writing in your content area. Writing is not a kit or a program. Quick fix, one size fits all, scripted lessons don't convert reluctant writers into independent ones or poor writers into effective ones. Writing is not a test preparation exercise. Although we want our students to do well when they take tests, teaching writing to prepare students for tests is counterproductive. Students who learn how to write well for authentic purposes will be better prepared for tests but students who only learn to write to test prompts will be ill-prepared to write for authentic, real-world purposes. Writing and reading are inextricably linked. Together, they help us make meaning of text, our experiences, and the world. Writing is a vital transaction between readers and writers. Writing is a skill. We must be both responsive to students' needs and mindful of the standards. We have to know our standards well enough to address the struggles that all writers have in the context of their own writing. Finding a focus, including pertinent details, and creating cohesion. When we address a student need that also happens to be a standard, we build writers. Writing is an igniter of passion and freedom. We can't motivate students to write by deluging them with terminology or someone else's bulleted lists. We have to ignite students' passions and let their souls, thoughts, fears, truths, experiences, and arguments shine on the page. Until the 1970s, most writing pedagogy emphasized learning and assessing a sequence of essential skills. Forming letters, building vocabulary, identifying parts of speech, diagramming sentences, mastering grammar and punctuation and following paragraph types and genres of writing according to prescribed conventions. This approach focused on the finished product with little attention to the purpose or process of producing it. The emphasis on correctness overshadowed the deep rhetorical, social, 
and cognitive possibilities of writing for communication and critical thinking. In many classrooms today, variations on the product-centered approach are still in use. Most research today supports the view that writing is cyclical. Writing proceeds in a nonlinear way and cycles and recycles through sub-processes that occur in a random order. Writers may create and change their goals as they move through each activity, depending on their topic, purpose, and audience. Additional research found that writing could develop higher order thinking skills. When students write as a process, it requires them to move beyond rote learning and learn how to question their own assumptions and reflect critically on alternative viewpoints. Researcher and author George Hillix Jr. argues that writing should be a form of inquiry and that a writing curriculum that incorporates inquiry strategies has the most substantive and powerful impact on student performance. These thinking strategies are the same ones writers need to produce content. Unlike a mechanical process you engage in after you have thought through a set of ideas, writing is, itself, a cognitive process that helps you form and analyze those ideas. Inquiry-driven writing instruction refocuses attention on developing content. In his book, Engaging Ideas, author and director of Seattle University's writing program, John C. Bean, offers these strategies for teaching critical thinking and inquiry. Give students raw data, such as lists, graphs, or tables, and ask them to write an argument or analysis based on the data. Think of opening frame sentences for the start of a paragraph or short essay. Students have to complete the paragraph by fleshing out the frame with generalizations and supporting details. Here are two more critical thinking strategies. Have students role play unfamiliar points of view. Imagine X from the perspective of Y or what if situations. Develop cases by writing scenarios that places students in realistic situations relevant to your content area, where they must reach a decision to resolve a conflict. Either by yourself or in a group, let's take some time to reflect on which additional writing strategies we can use to teach critical thinking and inquiry. Please pause the video for a moment and brainstorm three strategies for incorporating critical thinking and inquiry into the writing process in your viewing guide. Keep in mind that most students will need both modeling and scaffolding to gain ability with inquiry-driven writing. If you're able, share with your colleagues. Press play when you're ready to resume. In education, we often hear peer editing, peer revising, peer review, and peer response used synonymously. For today's webinar, we're gonna stick with and define peer editing. Peer editing is a common classroom technique designed to provide student writers with an authentic audience of readers who can respond to their writing, identify strengths and problems, and recommend improvements. When students are first readers of their peers' writing, they learn both from serving as editors as well as from hearing the responses of others to their writing. The critical reading required as an editor can contribute to learning how to evaluate writing. Peer collaboration is also highly motivating, and it reflects the process that published authors experience as they craft their writing. Peer editing is most effective when it is combined with instruction based on evaluation criteria or revising strategies. When students are asked to engage in peer evaluation without specific guidance in teacher modeling, they are often unable to provide significant help because their evaluation and revision skills are limited. Left to their own devices, students will either correct the spelling or punctuation errors that they find, or will push the author to write the paper the way they, themselves, would have written it. Peer editing has been recognized as being a best practice in writing instruction for a number of reasons beyond just increasing student motivation and engagement. Let's examine a few others. Opportunities to improve drafts. When big picture responses are given early enough before drafts are set, student writers are more likely to make substantial changes in their drafts. The questions and comments with which peers respond to initial ideas or sequences of ideas can prod a writer to deepen her or his approach to a subject or anticipate reader questions and therefore incorporate answers. 
Later in the process, student writers may feel reticent about cutting or radically altering the work they consider almost finished. An expanded idea of audience. Getting and giving feedback in a small group or one-on-one -on -one setting enables student writers to enlarge their concept of readership. Prior to this process, they may have written with the idea that their only reader was the teacher. Hearing comments from a variety of readers with diverse and perhaps contradictory reactions makes writers realize that they can't please everyone and that they're going to need to revisit their original ideas of content and purpose in order to make revision decisions. Practice in reading for revision. Talking constructively to a partner or group of peer writers about writing can strengthen students' independent ability to read for revision. In peer editing, students practice making constructive comments that are directed at writing rather than at writers, a distinction that can help depersonalize the process and increase the usefulness of feedback. In addition, student writers are often relieved to get away from their own drafts for a moment in order to see how others are handling the assignment. Enhance communication skills. Talking with peers about their work can strengthen students' ability to articulate specific reactions and suggestions. Negotiating a revision suggestion requires a tricky balance of tact and clarity. In successful student editing sessions, when it's made clear that good job and this is perfect as is will be considered unsatisfactory remarks, students will develop speaking skills that they'll find useful in future academic and professional endeavors. Increased confidence. Students frequently start a class confident in their assumption that writing done by classmates is much better than their own writing. When they see their peers' first drafts and realize that drafts don't have to be perfect, and that those written by their peers look pretty similar to their own. They see that it is safe to loosen up and take risks in developing ideas. Just as we must give students guidelines for assignments and for working in cooperative groups, we must also establish guidelines for peer editing to ensure that students are offering each other balanced feedback. Only you know the students, the dynamics, and the climate and culture of your classroom. The guidelines may differ from room to room, but here are a few general principles to offer students. Be positive. Some students will be oblivious as to when their criticisms are too harsh. Critique. Some students may be hesitant to critique and will only tell their writing partner or group what they think has been done well. Remind students that even when a paper is good, it can always be improved upon. Any constructive feedback they can offer will benefit the writer. Be specific. Students may default to offering general feedback, such as, it was good, or some paragraphs don't flow. Encourage students to point to particular sections of the paper that exemplify their comments. At each stage in providing feedback, response templates can be helpful. Students who are new to peer editing may have the misconception that their job is merely to identify errors in mechanics or grammar. Although that may be one aspect of the process, it is important to explain that their job is more extensive and that they should address larger issues, such as organization, argument, voice, and coherence. It will be helpful to offer students a structured approach to focus their responses. This three-step process can be applied across grade levels and content areas. First, offer compliments. Students should tell their peer what is working well in the paper. Next, Describe what they've read. Students should describe how the paper is working in relation to some guiding questions. These questions can be the same for every text, but can also change depending on the writing assignment. Finally, offer suggestions about what could be improved. Many teachers will find it helpful to ask students to define the two or three areas that could be improved. Similar to an editing or proofreading checklist, a list of questions helps to guide peer editors through this process. This list of initial questions guides students to take a broad view of their partner's writing samples. What is my reaction to this paper? What is the writer trying to tell me? What does he or she most want me to learn? What are this paper's greatest strengths? Does it have any major weaknesses? You may use or be more comfortable with a checklist like the sample that appears in your viewing guide. You may choose to ask questions which address meaning, organization, structure, purpose, or writing strategies. 
What is important to remember is that there are many ways to peer edit. The strategy you teach must work for you, your content area, and your students. Pause the video here to draft four guiding questions that you can use for the peer editing practice in your classroom. Make sure that your guiding questions can be used across multiple units and texts. There is a space for you to record your notes in the viewing guide. Press play when you're ready to resume. We've spent time answering the what, why, and how of peer editing, but you still may be asking yourself, what does this look like outside of the ELA classroom? Let's take a look at specific peer editing strategies that can be used across content areas. There may be times when you'd like your students to share their writing and offer feedback to peers, but you don't have enough time for them to devote to the peer editing process we just examined. Two pluses and a wish is a quick strategy that you can use to introduce students to peer review and help them learn to read their classmates' writing through an editor's lens. Students identify two positive aspects of the work of a peer and then express a wish about what their peer might do next time in order to improve another aspect of their work. As with all other strategy instruction, teachers model this several times, using samples of student work before asking the students to use the strategy in pairs. A speed review can be a useful tool when many students are struggling with a particular aspect of the assignment or desire feedback at an early stage. It works well with any part or aspect of the paper that can be read fairly quickly and for which the instructor or students can identify correct or desirable components. A good speed peer review could be performed, for instance, on thesis statements. For such an exercise, students should bring printed versions of their thesis statements to class. Chairs should be arranged in a circle or desks in a group, and the class should come to a consensus about how exactly they should respond to the thesis. For instance, students might focus on if the thesis is specific enough, or if it responds to the prompt. The instructor then has students pass papers to the right and gives students three minutes to read and offer written feedback under the thesis in front of them. After three minutes, students pass papers to the right again, and the process is repeated. In this way, in less than 10 minutes, students can get several different perspectives on the effectiveness of their theses. During a small group feedback session, students take turns reading their work and listeners provide feedback on how the ideas were presented. As I mentioned before, peer editing requires modeling. A tip sheet that directs students about which aspects of writing to attend to and how to give helpful feedback is helpful. Let's look at a few examples of feedback tips. Point out the strong parts first. Always begin with what the writer did well before pointing out weaknesses. Focus at this stage on the big ideas, beyond the grammar or mechanics. Remember this is a listening activity too. Not every student in the group will see the written text. Save editing for technical errors until the writer has had the opportunity to revise. Try to help the writer explain his or her point of view rather than change it to yours. Remind students that they are listening for fluency, cohesion, strength of argument, or any other criteria you predetermine. Identify any spots where you were confused or desired more explanation. However, leave it to the writer to address those needs. Explain to the writer how you understood the information, but don't try to fix the text for him or her. Students are better editors than you'd expect them to be when they have the time, space, and tools to edit effectively. Editing stations highlight the importance of writing that is as error-free as possible. Remember to save in-depth editing sessions for the time just before an assignment is due. Students will be more focused on the task at hand and your instructional time will be preserved. Here's how to set up an editing station. Create a well-stocked editing center. Provide colored pens and pencils sticky notes, highlighters, and other editing materials. If space is an issue, consider placing these materials in a box that students can move around the classroom as needed. Establish guidelines that students should follow while they work in the editing station. Consider creating a poster to display these guidelines and hold students accountable for adherence to your expectations. Model the guidelines to set a tone for how editing partners should work together. Ask your students to self-identify their areas of expertise and post their names and areas of interest in the editing station. For example, students may choose to be the grammar guru or spelling sage.
either by yourself or in a group. Let's take some time to reflect on the classroom application of the four strategies we just discussed. With which four units and or specific texts will these strategies work best with your students? Please pause the video for a moment and map four specific units and or texts onto each strategy. If you have time, list multiple units and or texts. If you're able, share with your colleagues. Press play when you're ready to resume. Editors, publishers, professors, and many teachers often use technological features to offer feedback. Students, most of whom are adept at using technology to communicate, can also use these tools during the peer editing process. Since students typically have access to Microsoft Word both inside and outside of class, it can be an effective tool for giving feedback. It's simple to learn and use, and teachers can model this process using a projector and writing sample. Students can easily highlight a section of text and type in their feedback. Google Drive is an online word processor that is more limited as a writing tool in many respects than Microsoft Word, yet it offers some increased functionality for responding and talking about writing. First, students can share their document links and enable commenting without having to trade files back and forth as one would have to do to take advantage of Word's commenting features. Google's commenting feature also has discussion threading built in so that one can reply as a separate comment to an existing comment. One of the advantages of working in a face-to-face -face peer response group is that it often results in conversation about the text. For a completely online peer response workshop experience, the teacher can simulate a similar conversation by requiring students to post their feedback using a class blog or wiki page. For day one, have the students read and post their initial responses. For day two, have everyone, including the writer, respond to other responses. Perhaps it would be good to have a follow-up day three with additional responses. Otherwise, without the assignment requiring them to visit and engage in conversation over a period of time, most students will post only once. How else might you use technology tools to support the peer editing process? Pause the video here to jot down some ideas in your viewing guide. Press play when you're ready to resume. As teachers, we are constantly assessing our students both formally and informally. Peer editing is a valuable yet time-consuming process. Therefore, we want to ensure that it is beneficial to our students. Let's look at a few methods for evaluating the effectiveness of this process. Have students attach a cover memo when they hand in their papers, explaining how they incorporated feedback from the peer review, what they couldn't use, and why. This is also useful if reviewers commented orally in class without writing down their comments. If reviewers have written their comments for the writer, have students hand in peer review worksheets with their drafts. You can do a quick check of the contribution of each reviewer and see how much attention the writer has paid to the reviews. Give each reviewer a critic grade worth a few points. Another option is to have students fill out a review worksheet on their own papers before they submit them. They can compare their self-assessment to the feedback from their peers. You could also ask students to identify particularly good reviewers and then have those excellent reviewers discuss their methods in class. If the work is done electronically, you might display a strong peer review to the class as a model with permission of author and reviewer. Do you have any other suggestions to add to this list? Pause the video here to brainstorm ideas for evaluating the effectiveness of peer editing. Press play when you're ready to resume. Either by yourself or in a group, let's take some time to reflect on the classroom application of peer editing, the strategies we've discussed today, and your content area. Choose one specific text. This may be one of your texts from our previous reflection. Write three new guiding questions for your specific text. Here are some guiding questions we suggested earlier. What is my reaction to this paper? What is the writer trying to tell me? What does he or she most want me to learn? Imagine that you're one of your students engaging this text for the very first time. As a student, answer all three guiding questions in paragraph form. Please pause the video for a moment, draft your questions, 
and answer them as if you're reading the text as a student for the very first time. If you're able, share with a colleague and ask them about their text, guiding questions and answers. Then ask, how does this text connect to your unit's themes, assignments, and assessments? In other words, how does this specific text help you teach your unit? Press play when you're ready to resume. That brings us to the end of our webinar. Please take a moment to fill out our brief survey by visiting the link provided. Thank you for learning with us today.